What's up guys? This is Dan here for Bluecast Studios and today I'm doing a tutorial on the spinning ring intro and we'll check that out so you can get an idea of what it looks like. I'd recommend just going to the channel and looking at it because this playback isn't very good. I also like this comment. Oh, oh, <laughs> just got another like. Alright, so jumping into After Effects, make a new composition and we'll do 720p, so 1280 by 720 square pixels and 24 frames per second. And we'll start with 10 seconds, that's fine. And by the way, I have a cold, so I'm going to be sounding a little goofy, but you're going to have to deal with it. So, um, starting off, let's make a new solid. And black is fine. Come to the effects and add a ramp. <clears throat> make the top a dark, darkish blue. And the bottom a little bit lighter. That's fine. And then make another solid. We'll make this one kind of a lighter blue. And then we'll just drag it down here. Hold shift if you want to just align it along axes. Drag it around here. And then we can add a directional blur vertically. And blur it out a little bit. Change the blending mode to add and drop the opacity a little bit. Just make kind of like a floor. Okay, so the first thing we have to make is the um, the actual ring type deal. So to do that we're gonna make another solid and make it white and then pre-compose it. Move all attributes to new composition and so now we have this white solid and open it in the um, its composition. So then take a mask and just draw it. Oops. Just draw a uh, rectangle about like this in the middle there. And then come over here and add a CC sphere effect. And basically what that does is it makes a 3D looking sphere out of a 2D object so if we change the X rotation we can kind of see that it's a, a cross section of a sphere so this is what we're going to be using um, basically you can mess with this however you want your title to look I think in my comp I used a um, 123 so we can do that and then you can change the radius to get the size you want. So we'll make it a little bit bigger. And then um, you can mess with the light and the light height to get different parts of it highlighted. Um, and then also the direction. That will change everything. So you can really change this however you want yours to look. But we'll just keep it pretty simple for now. Another thing is these bottoms are kind of chopped off so if we just extend our um, our mask we can make the sphere a little bigger so let's make it about like like that would be cool maybe a little more on the side and again we can always change this later so um then we'll add a box blur just to make this a little less harsh and just Bring it up a little bit, maybe two pixels, and then copy and paste this and bring the radius of the bottom one up a little bit more so this kind of makes a little glow effect like that. And that should be good. So if we come back into our um, comp here, we've got our ring. And I think the background is way too bright, so let's darken this up. Let's make this one black. It's a little bit darker. Bring this one down. And drop the pasty on this a little bit. And then um, if we change the transfer mode of this to 
add there that looks better okay so we've got our ring here but instead of spinning it with these parameters um, over in this comp so spinning it kinda like this way we're gonna spin the whole composition here so that it makes kind of a cool looking effect so if we hit R bring up the rotation hit the um, stopwatch there set it to zero then move ahead to like six seconds or so and actually just bring up this number <clears throat> say 10 for now and so that will just make it rotate 10 times completely around in six seconds so but what we want to do is have this accelerating so we'll put a keyframe around in here and so for the first two seconds we'll have it spin only say uh, like one time around or so and then by the end we want it to have spun let's try 15 or so and then if we change this hit F oh gosh 7 nope 11 alright since the keyframes seem to not be working with the screen recording software I will right click go to keyframe interpolation and change it to Bezier and hit OK there we go so basically that like smooths the transition between this keyframe and this keyframe and if we just look at the graph real quick <clears throat> where is you there it is okay so you can see that it kind of ramps that instead of it just being linear um, so we can work with this and another thing we're going to want to do is turn on the motion blur so turn it for this and the comp and let's um, play that back real quick see what that looks like okay so the start is way too slow that starts looking good there but let's make the start here say 5 maybe and bump this up even higher to like 20 Okay, let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> okay, I think that looks good. And see, you can really get it to make some cool different shapes if you just go into the uh, comp here and mess with either ro rotation and the x direction or the radius or the um, the light parameters here if you change the, the direction of the light and remember that since we have two copies of the same thing um, we have to change both of them or you could just change one and get something interesting looking like that Ooh, I like that <laughs> what do you know maybe I'll keep that okay I'll keep that for now so Moving on, we can make a new text layer, and so this will be our title. And we're going to want to line it up inside the um, circle there. So I'll just do blue cast, and I'll be using Century Gothic. And we'll do. I'll mm, be good. Shrink it down a little bit put it in the middle and then duplicate it control C control V bring it down and change this one to come on computer studios and maybe shrink a little bit and change the color to bit darker okay so that's looking good and <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is add our lens flare to try to give it life so the title basically we're gonna want the 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 ring to spin around get going really fast and then have a big light flare and then the titles come in so we'll start the titles off here right where it stops spinning and our flare comes in um, 
so that should be good and what you want to do is get the rotation down how you want it before you add any flare because we're going to adjust the brightness of the flare and make it like flicker according to where this is spinning so if you change if you put your flare in adjust all the brightness parameters and keyframe it and then you want to change your rotation speed you have to go back and change all of the keyframes so I'll show you in a second but get this how you like it first before you do anything so we'll just double check here and make sure we're happy with this let me change this to quarter because my computer is so freaking slow okay we'll go with that and this is the only parameter that we can't really change later so like I said get that down so now we're gonna be adding a new solid black and we'll be using optical flares but um, you can probably just use a normal flare it just won't look as good so I'm just gonna use one of the presets um, do motion graphics and monster flare I think I used so it's monstrous that's what we need ah uh, yeah okay so then we'll right click change the blending mode to add and then line up the center of the flare with the top right corner so should kind of spin through the flare. So right about there is good. So now basically since the light on our object is along this top side we want the flare to ignite every time that bright spot comes by so it looks like it's kind of reflecting light and now I'm sure there's a better technique to do this but I don't really know how to do it better so this is how I did it and I'll show you that so we'll just be manually going through and adjusting the brightness so it starts here so we'll keep it 100 percent and right here we'll fade it to zero so that kinda fades out comes back around and right here we'll set a keyframe make okay not that high 100 again and here we'll fade it back to zero So ignites comes down it spins around again and by the way I'm using page up and page down to go frame by frame so we'll put a keyframe here and we'll make it a hundred again and then again fade it down to zero around now okay so this is the point where we want it to get really bright and kind of hide the ring so that it stops spinning and then that fades down so if we go to our brightness and probably our scale too. Let's just set the last one right about here. Put some keyframes in. Hit UU. Bring up all of our keyframe parameters. Set them here and then right on the title let's make the brightness really bright. And maybe bring up the scale a little bit. Okay. And then over a period of maybe a few seconds, one and a half seconds, bring it back down to how it originally was. So spin, spin, spins, and then boom. And actually, I think what I did instead of just getting bright and then fading down, I had it get bright and then get even brighter. So here it's. 630 and 130 we make it here do say 660 and 160 then it kind of like explodes and then comes back down maybe we'll drop these a little bit just so you can kind of see that so it's really bright and then fades back down and I think we won't want them to fade to zero. We want the flare to still be there, so we'll put the brightness to end on at 
that's 70 and then another thing we can do is change the flicker and turn that on a little bit just so add some variety but um let's render that and see what that looks like so far I think that looks good. We might want to change the fact that the dark spots are highlighted. Might make it look a little goofy with that light. Let's see here. Maybe if we made it a little less obvious. Maybe about there. Alright, well, good enough. Okay. So we've got the main part down. Um, now, 50% of this is um, sound effects. So a lot of people are asking how I did the sound, so I'll go over that. Basically, it's just kind of trial and error and compositing different sounds, I think. The main thing is people try to use like one perfect sound effect or something, and that's hardly ever going to be the case. So if you get some good sounds together that you think you could work and layer them and mess with the timing and stuff, that usually works. So I used three main sounds. Um, it's reverse rinser, power down swish, and echo swish. And these are all from Andrew Kramer's designer sound effects. So we'll start with this one. And this is, here, I'll solo this. Oh, well, that works too. I don't know if you can hear that. It's like a computer powered on sound. So I thought that was good, but obviously that's not really going to be building. So what I did is I took it and I reversed it. So it basically starts quiet and kind of like that. And if you watch the waveform, it'll end large instead of beginning large. So if we line that up right on the big flare, we'll see what that sounds like. So that's a good start, kind of gets like a building sound in there, but that's definitely not all we want. So we'll take this reverse rinser sound, and here if I just, ugh, I guess I'll have to do that. So this, so you know what that sounds like. So I thought that sounded good, kind of like a building sound. So we need to put right where it gets to its highest point, right on our big flare spot, which is right there. And then um, sounded pretty good, but I thought it needed a little bit more. So this is our sounds together right now. Okay, so that sounds good, but I duplicated it took the second one, stretched it to 200%, so it's even longer, and then slid it over and lined it in the same spot again, but this way there's more sound at the beginning, so you can see what that sounds like. So that builds really well. But I also wanted kind of like a spinning sound. This is all just kind of a linear motion sound, but I wanted something to sound like it was spinning. So I found this echo swoosh sound, and I'll solo this so you can hear what it sounds like. And it's really short, but it's kind of the sound we want. It's like a electronic swoosh sound. So I decided to use that. So I made three copies of this. And the first one I put at the end, just the normal sound, and line that up with so that it'd be ending kind of on the flare spot. And then I took second one, I think I stretched it, I don't know, let's try 300%. I have to stretch it a lot. And put it kind of in here to fill that spot. And then took this one and stretched it even more, maybe 500%. And 
dragged it all the way across kind of in here so let's see what that sounds like I might have to reference my other comp and see if that's quite how I did it but yeah that, that sounds pretty good you can kind of hear like it's a tumbling sound or something The one thing I don't like is this power at the very end of it. It sounds kind of dumb, so chop that down. And these are the sounds I use. You could put more sounds in, but I think this is definitely a good start. I'll watch the video. Let's see what it looks like with the ring on. Yep, so that's how I did the sound, and then um, last things I did were just quick adjustment layers. I did a, a vignette, not super intense, just to bring the tension a little bit. I added a letterbox, which I put on almost all my videos. And I added a quick um, color correction, just the curves, to kind of jazz it up a little bit just like the contrast so there you have it that is the idea and again however you want this ring to look this has, looks a little different than the one I used but if you just go in here you can really it's endless possibilities if you just change where the light hits it and you can obviously make even more of these layers and really mess with that but as long as you don't touch the rotation the um it will all update and it will still look right. The one thing if you change where the, the bright spot is, um, the sun flare will probably be hitting on the dark side, so you might want to not do that. But um, yeah, so that's the gist of it. And um, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe and look at all the other videos. But um, thanks for watching and have a good day.